back to Blue Glow Electronics uh, YouTube very video series. I believe we're going to have another exciting adventure together on this unit. Um, it's an audio research SP10 high definition stereo phono and preamplifier. Fairly nice unit. Um, these things were um, somewhat revered as a uh, audio reference uh, piece of equipment. So show you a little bit about it today. By the way, this will be part one in the series, uh, and you'll see why in a minute. I'll end up making multiple videos before I get this thing fixed, but let me show you a little bit about this unit first. Um, it's a two-piece unit, so this piece you're seeing right now is the actual preamplifier itself. It has the tubes in it, and we'll show you that in just a second. And then there's a second piece, which is the power supply, and you're actually seeing the back of it right now front of it looks very much like the front of the uh, preamp. Uh, just got two switches there, one for the uh, power to turn it on and off, and a second one to power these outlets on the back here if you wanted to uh, use them to power other pieces of audio equipment. So um, what connects these two together is this heavy duty umbilical cord that goes between the two units, carries all the low voltage and high voltage power supply lines, to the uh, to the preamplifier here from the power supply. Inside the uh, preamplifier, you'll actually see there are 12. Count them: um, six DJ8 or 6922 um, audio amplifier tubes. And we'll go through the exercise of testing all those. I've actually tested these four already, and one of them is completely dead. One is weak. One is marginal, and the other is decent. But to be honest, if this was my unit, uh, and I'll end up going back to the customer and asking them about this, I would get um, 12 matched pairs there to uh, three quads of matched pairs and make sure all of them are matched. So um, uh, just to make it nice and clean. At any rate, um, let me show you the schematic on this thing real quick and show you what I'm chasing down right now. All right. If you'll notice up here, um, we this is the input. It goes to the power leads. Um, there's a relay that controls these back half um, outlets I showed you earlier to switch other equipment. Um, but then you get to T1 right here, which is the primary power transformer. And if you come out the other side of T1, you notice there's two orange wires, two yellow wires, two brown wires, two red wires with a center tap, which basically is red with a yellow stripe on it, and two green wires. Um, this is for filament voltages, as you can see here. And this feeds other parts of the amplifier we'll get to later. But I'll show you what I'm chasing down right now. It really hovers around this. If you'll notice here on the two red wires, you should have 390 volts AC from red wire to red wire. Um, so if you think half of 390, um, you'd be a, a little under, what, 200 volts, uh, maybe 195 volts here, um, halfway in between there and the same halfway in between there. And you'll see here in a minute, we've got some opportunities with that here in this amplifier. All right, what I did a while ago, I texted the guy that dropped this thing off. Um, Cause a lot of times people drop this stuff off at a pickup location I use. I use um, a record shop or two in town and a few guitar shops around that uh, people drop stuff off there and then I'll pick it up on a regular basis. and fix it and then take it back and drop it back off. It's usually the way I operate. I rarely do pickups drop offs here at the house. It's just hard to match up with my crazy work schedule. But um, got this thing and I, and I called the guy or texted the guy that had dropped it off because a lot of times they don't leave a lot of info. Um, just need servicing or could you check out things of that nature. But text the guy, called me back and I talked to him and uh, asked him what was wrong. And he said uh, he was using it one day and um, as he turned it on, he smelled some smoke, uh, or saw some smoke, and so uh, I thought before I went crazy on this thing, I would uh, try to diagnose what might have been causing the smoke. So first thing I did was I went around and, you know, like little components like this resistor, resistor, little ICs, um, little voltage regulators and switching chips. I went around and physically checked out everything in this thing, top, bottom, um, whatnot. And the other thing I did was I used my sniffer. I actually got my nose down inside the board and sniffed around. And uh, as I kept going around, I, ne I never did find any components that really looked bad. Doesn't mean there aren't some bad ones, but nothing 
visually obvious jumping out at me. Didn't see any big bulges on the capacitors down here. Um, doesn't mean they're they're bad. I, I haven't got that far yet to be honest. But what I did notice was that um, I smelled um, the most of the uh, the smell was coming from over here in this corner, which is actually the uh, power supply transformer. And if I can get a light going on here, um, down inside, it's kind of hard to see, but kind of where I got the light down in there. You can see this thing's been hot before, this transformer. Um, and the uh, the wires here, all these uh, black paint or whatnot coming off the transformers was all uh, brittle and chipped off, which is not, not, not uncommon. So at any rate, what did I do? I powered it on. Um, and what I did was I took each of these wires coming out of the transformer here. If you'll notice, there's a yellow pair here. There's an orange pair, and they're twisted together down here, kind of hidden, but they go down to the board right here. There is a green pair that goes, where does the green pair go? Down in here. There's a brown pair that goes over here. And then, of course, there's the red pair that go down to the, uh, to the motherboard here. And what I found was, you know, you hooked up my handy dandy little uh, X Tech um, voltmeter, digital voltmeter. And as I went across each one of them, they, they checked out for the most part. You know, the brown ones were checking out what it said on the schematic over there should. The green ones checked out, the yellow checked out, whatnot. Then I got to the red wires, and um, that's when I started seeing some crazy things. So the red wires, just so you know, originally went down right here and right here, uh, two spots on these. And it basically goes into a four diode uh, bridge rectifier circuit here. And, um, and then the center tap wire, which is this red with yellow, goes back here into the middle of uh, between these... Uh, Two capacitors, power supply capacitors. And what I was noticing was I wasn't getting the uh, voltage out that I should be. So let me show you what I did. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, if you'll remember in, from some of my previous videos, I use a little foot switch down here. Uh, flip it on, red light comes on. It's a variac. And if I look at the output across the two red wires, which should be 390 volts, I am getting a whopping 13 volts at this point in time. Let me shut this off and show you something. Okay, you'll notice what I did. I moved one lead off of the primary red here over to the center tap. Um, so center tap should be, like I said earlier, roughly half of the output voltage, 390 volts. So somewhere in the 195 to 200-ish volt range is where this should be. And if I flip my little foot switch on here, let me get where you can actually see. It registers out at 213 volts, which is, that's not bad under no load. Um, so basically we know that that side of the transformer is good. Let me show you what happens here when I switch to the other side. And I'm gonna kill the voltage while I do this with my foot. Um, if I take this, and move it to this wire instead. And I turn it on. I have a great big whopping 6.8 volts. And if you'll notice, it's no, it never gets steady. Seven, seven, six. It bounces all around. Um, it, it never does steady out. And that is because we've got bad windings in the transformer here. Um, you can smell it. <laughs> this thing starts to get really hot to the touch. I left it on for a couple minutes a while ago, um, you know, because first, I, the reason I disconnected these once I noticed I wasn't getting a, um, the appropriate voltages down at the board was I thought, well, maybe it's something in the circuit, you know, uh, dampening or uh, shorting the voltage to ground, keeping keeping me from getting what I wanted. So once I disconnected, I mean, really, you're only dealing then with the power input lead, kind of goes to the power switch on the front. Um, comes back over here and uh, goes in the transformer. And the fact that we're now getting a, it's rose up a little bit to 13 volts, but it's certainly not the, hang on, I'll show you. Switch that over, turn it back on with my foot. 
Certainly not the 212 volts we're seeing on the other half of that transformer output. And so if it was double this, we should be getting a little over 400 volts, which is what is required <laughs> for the plates of these two um, high voltage tubes here that are then used for the power supply, um, which ultimately comes over here and feeds these things. So um, I'm not going to go much further. I'm going to stop at this point. Um, two things probably need to take place. Um, I've already done one of them. I emailed Audio Research and said, hey, here's the part number. And do you happen to have one of these transformers <laughs> in stock that you would sell me? Um, fingers crossed on that. They may or may not. It could run into a couple scenarios here. One scenario might be that they have them and they'll sell it to me and it'll, it'll cost whatever it does and I'll pay that and they'll ship it to me. The other scenario is that they have one, but they may consider it a non-sellable part. Um, in other words, a uh, customer may would have to take this amp back, um, uh, put it back together, and they may have to ship it to AR and actually let them service it. Uh, you run into that sometimes with uh, original equipment manufacturers. They'll sell some parts, uh, but other ones they just won't let go of. and. Uh, They'll only do it if you uh, let them do the servicing. So, um, The other scenario that we've got to think about is the fact that um, this power transformer probably did not go bad on its own. Highly likely something in here is shorted out in the power supply section for the high voltage and has caused that transformer to short out and go bad. So it won't be, um, I bet about 90% uh, chance that it won't be just replacing the power transformer. I'm going to have to dig down into this bridge rectifier circuit, get into the power supply capacitors, um, and potentially these tubes, and figure out what's actually killed that power transformer to begin with. So I hate this is how it's turned out this early in the game, but I hope hopefully I've shown you enough in this uh, part one video you can see the methodology I used to kind of quickly get to um, the bad part um, without, you know, there's hundreds of parts in these uh, two pieces without, you know, spending a lot of time chasing ghosts per se. Um, we quickly got to uh, the root cause so, or a symptom of the root cause, which might be the actual power supply circuit is uh, bad in somewhere, which uh, caused the power uh, transformer to short out any rate, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up for now. I've got another piece of equipment I'm wanting to get on the bench today. Uh, I'm going to email the customer. I'm actually going to put this video together and post it up online and let them watch the video. So should be all the proof they need to understand what they may be into. Um, don't know the cost yet for sure until I get a little more back from uh, these people, fine people at Audio Research around what this thing uh, may turn out to be. So. Guys, hang tight for part two, and there'll probably be another video or two along the way in between uh, this and when we get back to putting this thing back together. Thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you again soon.